It's our first NBC Bank weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank. 35 locations throughout southeast Louisiana and into the Florida panhandle. First NBC Bank, a proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. Lonnie Van Gilder on this side of the microphone today, along with Jude Young. Ken Trahan on assignment. He'll be back with us on Monday as we recap the weekend. Jude, an exciting night on Wednesday in the Smoothie King Center as the Pelicans wrap up the eighth and final playoff spot in the West. Going to the uh, to the dance, if you will, for the first time in four years. And the challenge now is you have to face the team with the best record in the NBA, the Golden State Warriors, beginning Saturday afternoon in front of a national ABC audience in Oakland. The first two games are in Oakland before games three and four come back to New Orleans. I don't think there's any doubt that everybody within the Pelicans organization is thrilled to be taking on this daunting challenge, and they certainly earned the right by beating a team as powerful and as on fire as the Spurs were when they came in on Wednesday night. Now turning your attention to a team that's about as potent offensively as any in the league. Can the Pelicans keep up the pace in a seven-game series? It'll be interesting to see. We've seen the Pelicans score in spurts like they did in the first half against San Antonio to give themselves enough of a cushion to hold on against the Warriors. You've got to be much more consistent than that. They may have caught an edge with this game one being an afternoon affair in Oakland. Perhaps the rowdiest fans in the league, especially for playoff basketball, when that place is packed, they are a factor. So maybe you'll catch them at a little bit of a lull. They've been waiting for this first round to come along for a while, while for the Pelicans, they've been pushing to the very end to just make the playoffs. I won't count out a team with as much firepower when New Orleans is as healthy as it is right now. Yeah, and that is the one good thing that we've seen. I mentioned it Wednesday night uh, on on Twitter is the fact that you know in the fourth quarter we saw the three guard lineup of Evans, Gordon, Holiday with Davis and Anderson. That was the lineup that we thought we would see at crunch time of games. How many minutes did we see that lineup this year? Not many. So it was good to see that on the floor and know you can put that combination out there and you are healthy indeed going in to the playoffs and you won't have back-to-back. So ideally that means that Drew Holiday will continue to to work his way more and more into the rotation. Andrew Holiday has taken a very nice role with the second unit, dominating other guards, and that was a real factor in the second quarter against the Spurs. It was also key uh, in the previous game that he played. He took the second to last game off because of a back-to-back. But at the end of games, can that small ball lineup come together? You may really need it against a Warriors team that likes to go small themselves. So that could be a plus for the Pelicans to be able to match up. I don't know if it's good enough defensively that's always been the question mark but we saw Amir Asik in the fourth quarter against the Spurs have to come out of the game because of the hack a seek uh, strategy by San Antonio give them credit they kept fouling them and he kept missing free throws until he had to come out of the game you'd like him in there defensively but if the Pelicans have to go small they have built a team to do it and it's going to face the ultimate test against Golden State yeah it's the it's the ultimate conundrum do you try to go big and force Golden State's hand or do you play small and match them and try to do that. Again, game one is Saturday, 2.30, tip time in New Orleans. It'll be 12.30 in Oakland, as Jude mentioned, an early start out there. Uh, It'll be on ABC. Game two and three will be on TNT. Game two is Monday night in Oakland before the series comes back here to New Orleans next Thursday night. Let's shift gears to uh, to college baseball. Uh, LSU making a change in their weekend rotation. Uh, Tigers still, you know, hovering, uh, you know, one-two in the the polls, but the Changing things up and uh, pulmonary realizing it's time to, to give the freshman a shot to go on Friday night, but it's an interesting strategy that he's employing in that he may take the Lutcher native, Jared Poche, and, and kind of put him in that role that we saw Lewis Coleman use uh, the, the last time the Tigers won a national championship back in 2009, where he might both close and start. Maneri is reaching back for strategies as he's used before, as you mentioned, including uh, taking last weekend and giving a freshman that had built up a lot of innings in Alex Lang off before moving him into the Friday night role. He didn't do that with Aaron Nola as a freshman, but he did give him a weekend off in SEC play to limit his innings and keep him fresh for the postseason. Lang, much more important in his role than Nola was several seasons ago because he is clearly the ace of the staff. They're not going to go anywhere if he's not a number one type starter. 
and Poche, as you mentioned, now being asked potentially to come in in relief in the first game of a three-game weekend series and then push back to be a starter in Game 3 like Lewis Coleman was so successful at doing uh, during a College World Series run. I like it because you're trying to maximize your very best arms with the postseason in mind. Last year, LSU was a little short. In, in pitching, particularly in the bullpen. They may have more options, but still unproven. So Maneri setting himself up to potentially go with his best when it counts. Be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, Tulane's had a rough go of it in the, in the first three weeks in the American. They're back home this week, uh, weather permitting, against a, against the UCF team that is very good. But but in spite of that, you know, with the schedule that they've played and give give David Pierce a lot of credit and plus also give this league a lot of credit, Tulane's sitting around 50 in the RPI to where if they could finish the last month or so of the regular season strong, they may be in position to make a postseason run. There's no doubt about it. They know they'll be in the conference tournament, but leading up to it, they still have the pitching in order to go on on a streak again like we saw them win a lot of one run games early in the season they may have to do that because I think that was the real deficit that David Pierce was facing coming in we knew the bats had not been productive the previous couple of seasons a big reason for this postseason drought for the wave they could still pull it together because again they have enough arms to do it and they're being coached in a way to be able to play towards pitching and defense and manufacturing runs it hasn't worked out in series on the weekend so far but like you mentioned you start off with a series win against UCF that's really good for your RPI and could build some momentum yes we'll see how that plays out we'll see how the weather plays out on the college front it's it's already impacted some things in in terms of some schedules on the college front uh the scheduled opening of the of the region 23 series between Delgado and Baton Rouge Community College has been pushed back from Saturday to Tuesday uh, so they, they will wait a couple more days. This this rain in the New Orleans area has really wreaked havoc on both the college and the high school schedules. It's been a guessing game, and unfortunately we've seen breaks in the weather come after cancellations and a lot of head scratching afterwards. But we were told coming into this past week there would be 90 to 100% rain every day, and it's been that guessing game that's been tough to deal with. But with the high schools in particular coming down the stretch before the postseason needing to squeeze in those regular season games, fingers crossed that we have have about a week here so that that can happen a lot of these schools particularly in class 5a catholic league schools they really need to get these games in and they're battling for position and perhaps home games in the postseason top 16 or at home in the first round of the of the high school playoffs 5a and 4a have to end their season by a week from saturday the lower classification schools have another couple of days because they play a shorter playoff format so we'll see how that plays out and stay tuned to sportsnola.com as we'll have much more on our coverage plans as part of the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. The weather has uh, has certainly uh, caused havoc to that as well because we were scheduled to do three games this week as well as the Delgado BRCC game from uh, from Kersh Rooney this Sunday. Uh, all of those out of the window. Uh, we will have an update on our coverage uh, coming to you very soon, so stay with that. And also check out sportsnola.com as we have uh, analysis of the LHSAA softball brackets, which are being released on Thursday, and uh, how that plays out for some of the teams in the area. A lot of good softball programs in the area looking to make their run to the Fast Pitch 56 in Sulphur. And an exciting tournament that that is and has been for the fast f- past few years at a great facility. I know locally we talk about it's tough to have to travel across the state, but I give them credit both in softball and baseball. They've done a great job as a host, and they have the facility that really fits the crowds and the needs of so many games. And with all of this weather, they have turf. Absolutely. They have turf. Jude, thanks for the visit. We will uh, we will see you again soon here in the uh, you know in the co-pilot's chair. I'm starting to take flight, flap, or whatever we're, we're coming up with now for a, a relatively new franchise branding. Finally, in the postseason, looking forward to it. Yes, indeed. That's Jude Young. I'm Lonnie Van Gilder. This has been our first NBC Bank weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank. 35 locations throughout Southeast Louisiana and into the Florida Panhandle. First NBC Bank, a proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. Ken will be back Monday. We will see you then. Stay with us right here at SportsNola.com for all of your coverage.